welcome back to one of my channels. I'm not sure which one. I'm assuming most likely Ahmad's Void, since I tend to do more personal vlog type videos on there. It's been a long time, definitely, since I've uploaded a video on either of my channels. They've been kind of inactive or dead for the last year at least, uh, if not longer. I've just become less frequent with my uploads, I suppose. But I wanted to make this video since I'm nearing, I'm getting closer towards my five year anniversary for at least my main channel, The Game Expert. So that's how long I've been on YouTube as a platform, as a creator, as someone who uploads videos to a channel. Yeah, like I said, it's been a long time. This five year kind of milestone or something I always kind of had in my head as maybe a goal that I wanted to you know, do YouTube for at least five years. I feel like I've kind of slowed down, I kind of lost my steam a bit over the last few years again. Countless excuses I could come up for that. Um, but I guess the main easiest way to put it is just that I guess life gets in the way sometimes of the, the passions and the things you want to do. But I'm pretty happy with how it's gone overall. And I kind of wanted to just look at, you know, my my channels, both of them, the the videos I've uploaded kind of and you know how how successful they've been or how I felt like they went, you know, some of my regrets, some of my uh, things that I think you know I learned over the years and stuff like that. Just thought it'd be interesting to look at that. And I also think YouTube's definitely changed a lot as a platform since I started. Yeah, I don't know, I don't have a script right now, so it's just gonna be kind of an unscripted thoughts video again. Hopefully that will be fine. I don't know if anyone will be interested. <laughs> don't know if anyone will see my videos after having not uploaded for so long. I, I'm pretty sure the algorithms just filtered me out of existence maybe. And even if I upload this, it might not it might not show up in anyone's feed. But um, either way, you know, YouTube's always been a kind of passion project for me. And it's always been something I've done because, not because I, I like necessarily wanted to become really successful or I wanted to get loads of views and subscribers. I've kind of been through this before. It was just something that I thought was an interesting and enjoyable creative endeavor for me. And at least for my main channel at first, it was definitely a way I could just use to talk about things, specifically games that I liked and, you know, play them on camera and things. And it was kind of following the trend, I guess, of the let's play phenomena of just YouTubers posting videos of them playing games and you know you being able to see their live reactions and things like that. I think that that genre of videos definitely got very very saturated even when I'd started there were tons of channels who were already filling up that kind of niche that that audience that was already being met uh, definitely like Let's Plays, there's still tons of them, and reviews as well. I think there are a lot of channels still that do game reviews, and there's there's just such an abundance, there's almost like an oversaturation, and I feel like it's pretty hard to get any viewership really, or build an audience in a sphere that's already so populated. And that's one thing with YouTube or any social media platform on the internet, the key to success is definitely finding kind of a niche and sticking to it and being persistent and find like creating your own audience through your own unique content. A lot of my videos, I think, especially from the early years, were one, not I was nowhere near as skilled as a YouTuber, and two, they were definitely less interesting to watch, I think, because they were just like Let's Plays. And I don't think that was necessarily my strength. I think I really enjoy talking about video games and playing them and stuff like that. But there are a few things that need to kind of... You need to have in order to be a Let's Player, in order to be a good YouTuber in that genre. 
one, you need to be good at games, um, so that it's actually enjoyable to watch your kind of skill at games. That's one appeal of that genre. Another one is to be funny, which, you know, I tried, I attempted, but I don't know if I was always successful at being funny. Yeah, I, I actually, to be fair, those are probably your main two, is like skill and your character, your personality, but also you probably, you kind of, it's, 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 it's a difficult thing being a let's player because you have to concentrate on the game you're playing as well as provide interesting commentary. And I think that is definitely something maybe, it's, it looks easier than it's, it actually is, I think. It's not really difficult or anything, but it's not difficult to make let's plays, but to make good let's plays, I think is pretty... Yeah, I, I don't think it's something anyone can do necessarily. Doing Let's Plays was probably not my most enjoyable kind of videos to make. I think I struggled to make Let's Plays. I struggled to make them engaging. I struggled to get through the game. <laughs> I, you know, all that stuff. I didn't, I don't think Let's Plays were the best, my channel at its, at its best or anything. Or my YouTube career is best, kind of. I think Let's Plays honestly made playing games less fun because it just made it kind of stressful where I couldn't fully appreciate games or play them when I wanted to because I had to set up all my recording quit equipment and worry about, you know, am I, am I recording it in a good way that's going to be enjoyable after? And I think that kind of... That, that wasn't good for me. I think even now, I kind of just prefer, I kind of wish I just played games more by, just by myself, with no one watching, <laughs> kind of, you know? It got tiresome quickly, and I think it wasn't that creative. It wasn't that creatively fulfilling to just make Let's Plays. But yeah, I, I just kind of wanted, yeah, I wanted to look through some of my videos. I never reached 100 subscribers on my main channel. I got really close and I think it's still a very very reachable goal. I'm currently at 91 subscribers so I got really really close to 100. And I think if I kept pushing out videos and maybe if I promoted my content a little more and like if I hadn't lost steam a little over the last year I very realistically I think could have got to 100 subscribers but um that was definitely one of my big goals. I think getting to that milestone of 100 subscribers is like one of the hardest things for a YouTuber because that's like, obviously each milestone is very, very difficult. But at least when you've got a, a sizable audience that gives you some momentum to kind of, you know, those viewers share your content and it carries on kind of like that. But if you... I have a very small audience, then it's hard to grow that audience. I definitely know that most of my viewers are probably people I know in real life. Uh, sorry, my camera, as always, a staple of this channel is my camera not being steady <laughs> and just falling down mid sentence. But uh, yeah, I don't think my audience was actually ever that big. And that was also not something I really kind of focused on because I didn't try to tailor my content to try to make it really popular or clickbaity or anything like that. And that was kind of part of my integrity that I kind of wanted to keep. But um, one thing that was very surprising, <laughs> one of my videos called, uh, it was just a random, a random video in my super mario brothers 3 let's play series and it was one i did promote on social media to be fair and i just kind of put this you know this clip of me playing it and i, I titled it the big fish ate me that one got i think over a thousand views and i have no idea yeah it got 1271 views over three years which you know isn't amazing but it's definitely the best i've had on my channel I think that's my most viewed video and I find that really funny just because it's not anything spectacular that's the funny thing with the algorithm you don't get to choose which 
which videos get the most attention or which ones get the most views. Sometimes you, something will just succeed and blow up or in popularity out of nowhere seemingly and you'll have no reason, you'll have no idea why that one in particular, even if it might not be your best video. And I found that quite a lot with all of my videos, like I feel like a lot of my older content definitely got more views and I'm not, they're, they're videos I'm not necessarily as proud of, like even that the, the, the video I just kind of posted almost on a whim, I really had to rush it because I was for a deadline and it was just to enter this switch, win a switch competition. Some, some kind of channel was doing a competition where you could enter by showing how like you switch would change your life or switch your life or something. That video got so many views and it's really, <laughs> it's not, it's not a good video I don't think. It was okay but it's like, it's definitely cringeworthy to look back on. And that was another thing that was quite funny. Yeah that got like almost a half a thousand views. Like almost 500. So that's, that, that feels like quite a lot to be fair. And that was one thing I was definitely wary of when I started making YouTube videos. Because I started quite young, obviously you can tell when I, if you go back to any of my videos, my old videos, you know, I'm very, very young in them. And even at the time, you know, I was aware of the fact that I was young and that it would probably be, you know, a bit embarrassing for me to look back on after. But the reason why I always wanted to kind of start early and just stick with it was because I always thought, you know, you'd be able to see my progress as time went on. I've left pretty much the majority of my videos public from when I've started. At the start I definitely uploaded more frequently and they were probably not as good uploads. I, did, I was a bit rusty, I was a bit you know just finding my feet. I didn't really know what what videos I was making like it would just be quite quite random you know I had my Undertale series with my brother I had a few other games I just randomly tried because they were free and things like that I was more nervous then as well I was just kind of trying trying this YouTube thing out because I thought it'd be fun kind of thing but now I feel like my most recent videos I have actually made some really some videos I'm proud of that I feel like are really high quality and you know they're very well edited and I feel like some of them have really good structure some of the like again that's really funny because my intention was always to have the game expert be my main channel and then maybe made it make a side channel that ended up being Ahmed's Void and that was going to be for more low effort content but if there's one thing I know about me as a perfectionist is that I hate putting the minimal amount of effort into things. If it's something I care about, I want to properly craft it in a way that I'm going to be really, really happy with the final product. So that then again, that's that's another reason why my uploads have been less frequent, less consistent. But on Ahmad's Void, you know, my last major upload was a whole video summarizing kind of 2020 in my view. And I kind of went through all the, the crazy things that happened in 2020. But I thought that video came out pretty good. I thought that, you know, I was happy with how that came out. It didn't, it didn't do amazingly views wise or anything. And it was a really long video. I noticed that a lot of the videos I make where I'm just talking off the cuff. I go on and on and on for ages. But I was happy with how it came out. I put a lot of work into, you know doing the green screen background, having stuff in front that like was relevant to the topic I was talking about, making it so engaging through editing and different different things like that. Some of the main things I feel like I've gained through doing YouTube channels, doing a YouTube channel and running it and managing it over the years. The biggest thing was definitely video editing. I think I improved my video editing skills a lot considering I never really used any high-end software. I literally was just using iMovie all the time right from the beginning all the way to now pretty much. 
and I, I think I was able to do pretty sophisticated stuff with just eye moving. It, it felt like it was just more cohesive now. It's more cohesive the videos that I make rather than, you know, all over the place and, you know, a poor audio quality, poor video quality, all of that stuff. So yeah, I think I've definitely got better at video editing and just video production in general, like having a camera or having a mic, kind of I invested quite a lot of money and time into my channel, so it makes sense that I got better over the years. I do think it probably helped with my public speaking and my, my confidence and things. I was a lot more nervous and stuttery and things when I first started, and sometimes I'd play off that kind of me tripping over my words as, as I'd play off of that for jokes and things. You know, there's a lot of things I just, I enjoyed about making YouTube videos. And I kind of miss it in a way because I really do think that the main reason I haven't made YouTube videos that much recently is mainly because of a lack of time and also kind of a lack of motivation, I guess. I feel like there's definitely more I could have done I'd still probably could do if I wanted to explore making YouTube videos in more interesting and fun ways. I think one of the main things about trying to gain an audience and a viewership is that once you do that's what kind of motivates you to keep creating. I kind of explored that topic in a video I made on Ahmed's Void, it was called Product versus Response. I didn't get that many views, but basically um, the whole point of that video was that not getting that many views is fine. That's, that's not something I care about a lot. But the reason why I think views are important for creators is really that they, they, they motivate you. They're kind of there's this weird kind of relationship that a creator has with their audience where, you know, one drives the other and you, even if that can be frustrating because you have to kind of cater your content to appease your audience sometimes, it can be beneficial because, you know, if you get positive feedback, then that motivates you to create more content and things. I definitely made videos mostly for myself. I didn't really make them for other people as much, which is a weird thing because you're making videos like to be watched really. And I did enjoy, you know, promoting and sharing my videos and having people watch them and talk to me about them. But I also mostly just made them about topics that I cared about and made them in a way usually that I think you know, I'd enjoy watching this kind of content or I enjoyed just editing this together and making it watch and flow together in like a fun way and stuff. And yeah, like YouTube, when I, when I look back and I reflect, I think there are a lot of videos. I just had plans of like ideas of things I could have pursued and I still, I just never got around to it. And it would be stuff like, you know, sketches and reviews and video essays and commentary and all these things that I kind of, I had these ambitions, the things I wanted to do. Um, but it definitely was difficult to kind of actually do it because I did, again, that perfectionism in me, like whenever I want to make something, I want it to be really good to kind of, and Again, that's funny as well, because I think the quality of my older videos are really not not that great. They're like, I tried, I worked hard on them, but like, if I, want, if I look at them now, I'm like, wow, this was awful. <laughs> How did anyone watch this? That kind of thing. And I think a lot of YouTubers have that, have that um, relationship with their older content. This is so strange, looking at your older, your, your previous self talking and like being recorded and it's just it's such a strange experience I think it's really funny and interesting and like yeah I don't really regret I don't really regret doing YouTube I think it was a really interesting 
experience. And I am talking more, I, I noticed myself, I'm talking about him more in the past tense. And it's not that I'm like, officially retiring from YouTube or anything. There's definitely still, I'm leaving it open to whether I wa want to create more videos. I definitely could. Um, it's just about like finding time to do it and things. But yeah, the reason I talk about it, like, I guess in the past tense is because, I don't know, I feel like I did do a lot of the stuff I wanted to do with it, even if it wasn't everything I wanted to do. Um, it does feel like I kind of, I made a lot of pretty solid videos, I think. Um, and I was pretty happy with the videos that I made. The reason, again, I'm not as keen to carry on doing YouTube is maybe I did get a bit kind of creatively burnt out or I felt like you know I didn't have that much motivation to make make content anymore um and now I've just kind of looked into trying to explore other creative outlets other than just videos of myself um I think you know playing music is something I've been pursuing drawing and like animating and things they're all kind of other creative endeavors that I think I'm more interested in now almost I think YouTube's definitely something I would revisit but the other thing is the YouTube landscape's just changed a lot it's a lot harder now definitely it's a lot harder now to become popular or discovered by an audience than it was like I don't know, five, ten years ago. Because there's so many creators out there, and there's such a high level of quality in a lot of videos out there. That is just, there's so much competition, there's so much saturation. <laughs> there's so many creators, so many channels. So it's hard to actually stand out, I'd say. And it's not like it's impossible. There have definitely been creators and channels that have grown in popularity, you know, over the last year or so or whatever but I think a lot of it definitely comes down to luck and a lot of it comes down to consistency <laughs> and consistency is definitely something that you know I I have not necessarily shown <laughs> over the five years I've been on YouTube because yeah with my videos you know there'll be periods where I'd be uploading every week at the start or uploading every month and then there would just be like a five month long gap of no videos <laughs> and then I just go back maybe trying to put, pump out a few videos or maybe adopting a format that's that lends itself more well to longer wait times between kind of uploads you know with like the Arifintendo series I tried to do but <laughs> even that like that was difficult as well, that brought its own challenges, because even if I wasn't doing it as frequently, I found myself not not being able to push out the videos on time. And then, you know, there were so many times recently, over the past year, where I'd record a whole video for like Arif and Tender or something, and it would be 40 minutes, I'd gone through all the scripting, all the recording, and I was just at the editing stage, and that was the final stage, and the editing can be sometimes the most time-consuming stage, and I just wouldn't have time to kind of meet the deadline of these topics being relevant that I was discussing. So I'd make a whole video about all these news articles that were relevant in like, I don't know, 2020, mid-2020, late 2020, or something like that, and then by the time I'd actually kind of got towards the end of the process of making the video, all the things I'd covered were now irrelevant. <laughs> now the news cycle was just moved on. Everything I talked about, either they, you know, they maybe if there was like a leak or a rumor or something, then it would be like, no, now we already know that's true, or now we already know that's false, or it would just be old news basically. So that was something I definitely found was like. It was difficult to stay on that treadmill. I kind of spoke about that, I think, a few times at the beginning of each episode of Arif Nintendo, because I'd be like, oh, sorry, I'm late for the upload again, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that was an interesting thing. 
just the fact that it took a long time making each video, I kind of realized that, you know, I think especially because I was doing each part of the creative process all by myself. I didn't have an editor, I didn't have a writer or anything. You know, it was all me. And <laughs> I didn't have time to, for it, basically. I didn't, I couldn't commit as much time as I might have wanted because, you know, there are other commitments I had. Um, YouTube wasn't always the first priority in my life. And even now, that's the case, I think. I think the other thing that definitely came into play was probably mental health. I've opened up quite a bit on, I'd say both of my channels, but mostly Ahmed's Void. Just about the fact that I've been, I've been dealing with depression for like five years or so. Like, surprisingly, around the same amount of time I've been on YouTube. <laughs> I don't I don't think there's a correlation but um I did like kind of you know popping in jokes here and there or making videos just solely about my experience with mental health and things there are a lot of video like I've made a playlist of all of my videos that I'm really happy with as well like I think it's called my best videos or something and those are the ones maybe that I put the most effort into making, yeah, just making in general. <laughs> That's just the end of the sentence. Or also just I put a lot of editing into it to make it a really nice kind of cohesive piece and stuff. Because I think editing definitely is the thing that I enjoy most about making videos. Is just like going through and add adding music and doing cutaway gags and like zooming in and getting all the right kind of things in the frame and having the right background and like it can sound really boring and sometimes it is but it is definitely the part that like I felt like I excelled at most when it came to YouTube even when in those early stages even in those really early videos I think I really tried to like do cool stuff with editing because even when I was a kid, I think editing was something that like really excited me and was something I, I, I tried to do at a very young age. And yeah, I'd like make my own videos and on movies and things and just play around with iMovie. And that kind of translated into me pursuing YouTube for a while. Um, it looks like it's raining outside. So I feel like that's going to come into the audio, which is a bit frustrating. It's a sad day. It's a sad day because I'm ending YouTube. This is the clickbait thumbnail. I'm stopping YouTube forever. Oh no. All, all the videos I've made and I've kept up, at some point, I made them because I thought, you know, this would make a cool video, basically. And I think that's what YouTube's all about. And I think that's also another reason why I haven't made videos that much recently is because I just haven't had that kind of drive and idea where I'm like you know I want to make this video and I'm really keen to follow through and it wasn't just like an obligation that I was like oh here here we go again I have to make another video this month or whatever and I have to carry on with this let's play series because I started it like it's YouTube's most fun when you're just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what you know you what sticks or not even what sticks just trying out new things trying out new video techniques new types of videos just trying out stuff and making stuff like that creative process is definitely something i really enjoy but you know youtube has really youtube's been fun you know as frustrating as the creative process and the youtube production process has been whether it's you know, the, a video never releasing, or a video not getting attention, or a video getting recorded wrong, and like, I have no audio, or no, vid no video, or something. Despite all that, I still really enjoyed making videos, and I don't, I don't regret it. I don't regret making my channel. If I was going to, like, a few things, small things I maybe regret, are like, I could have started a bit later i could have started when i was slightly older um you know maybe i would have only had this would have only been my three-year anniversary or something but 
I still may be... I think if I started later, I might have started with a slightly less embarrassing, slightly better um, <laughs> quality of videos. You know, even then, that's just like hindsight, and you have to start somewhere. Like, I, I don't really mind that I started when I did, because... Again, it was fun. At the, it was fun at the time, and even if it might be embarrassing slightly now, I still think it shows that I've made a lot of progress since then. YouTube's changed a lot with advertising and things. I never made a dime off of YouTube. I never made a penny. I never monetized any of my videos, and a lot of them did get copyright claims. And that's one of the reasons, again, I didn't want to be restricted by copyright. I just wanted to make my videos however I wanted to. And then if they got copyright claimed, so be it. At least my channel wouldn't be taken down. But, you know, YouTube's got a lot more concerned about advertisers. And it's got a lot more ads, especially over like the last two years. Every video you watch on YouTube pretty much will have unskippable ads. If I can just complain about YouTube now for a bit, <laughs> that's completely like ruined my experience with YouTube. I find it so annoying and inconveniencing compared to before to always have ads on every video. Um, but also that's another thing, like if I wanted to try to make money off of YouTube, that's incredibly hard nowadays compared to a few years ago because you already have to reach like this first of all you have to reach the requirements of like a thousand or ten thousand subscribers or whatever I, I forgot what it was but you have to have a sizable audience to even be eligible to make money and if you are eligible it's a whole nother story trying to get monetized in case you know you have copyright claims or you get you know hit the yellow yellow mark like limited ads you, it's just it's a whole whole thing i'm sure you're probably aware of it but it's way more difficult to make money now because of the whole adpocalypse and advertisers pulling out and youtube trying to push out more adventurous youtubers and making things all advertiser friendly and making things less edgy and basically kicking loads of youtubers off their site and stuff like that, just like, it's definitely a different landscape than it was from when I started. It's a lot more difficult to actually be seen, but it is a lot more difficult to make content that doesn't appeal to everyone. I just realized this is the exact same t-shirt I wore. Oh, this is the exact same t-shirt I wore in my last video. I just picked out my- whatever. Ignoring that. That's pretty much most of the things I wanted to go through. I think it's pretty cool that I've been able to make videos for this long, even if I kind of stopped, like, beginning of this year, so... Really, I don't know if it's a well-deserved five-year anniversary, but it's still cool. It's a similar thing, like, even if I don't have 100 subscribers yet. 90 is still quite a lot. 90 is 90% of the way to the 100. So that's pretty cool, like, I'm glad I built that much. Even if it's like a really small thing, like, people have millions of subscribers or hundreds of thousands and, you know, here I am, I only have like 90 or whatever. But it's still, that's still cool. I still think, like, it was fun to, to, to make that achievement, I guess. I still think to myself, like, at some point, I want to get back into the groove of making videos regularly again. Or even if not regularly, I want to make really high quality videos. And make stuff I'm proud of, and make stuff that's interesting. But... I don't know, man. Depends on whether I can be bothered. Yeah, just, there it is. It's been five years since I've been on YouTube. I think that's pretty cool. Anyway, bye-bye.